Yo yo, what is going on, guys? Soldier only here from Sports Nerd Web. Welcome to this week's episode of Sports Nerd Web Weekly. <coughs> Excuse me, still trying to get over this cold. Uh, got a lot to get get into this week. Uh, first things first. Uh, in Nintendo Switch news, uh, the Nintendo Switch actually just recently passed 1.5 million uh, consoles sold, and that's mostly from its first week. Uh, it's also worth noting that uh, 89% of Switch owners actually also own uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which is not surprising. Um, that's obviously definitely a huge uh, you know, selling factor with that being a launch title. Uh, and this is from an article on Polygon. Uh, Nintendo Switch sales worldwide have reached 1.5 million consoles sold, according to a re report from uh, from Super Data. As first reported by GamesIndustry.biz, that figure comprises international sales recorded mostly during the console's first week on the market. Super Data's information comes from uh, Famitsu, the premier Japanese gaming publication and German-based global market research institute GFK. The specific breakdown has sales reaching 500,000 in the United States, based on Superdata's own estimate. In Japan, Nintendo has sold 360,000 Switch consoles. That number is uh, is from Famitsu, the firm told Polygon. Outside of those two regions, the data gets less specific. So that's kind of surprising to actually see that the Switch is actually sold more in U.S. Uh, than uh, than in Japan. Uh, I was I don't know. I'm sure in the long run, I think like when it's all said and done, that uh, more will probably sell in Japan. It's just that Japan is a really uh, the handhelds are are huge in Japan, you know. So uh, I'm yeah. So I don't know. I'm just a little surprised that it's uh, sold more in the U.S. so far. Uh, European sales are said to closely trail those in Japan, according to a mix of Superdata's research and GFK data. All of these sales figures come from the console's launch week at retail, making them a few days old. But overall, they corroborate with what Nintendo has hinted about the Switch's sales thus far. Uh, following the Switch's first weekend on sale, the New York Times reported that the Switch had surpassed the Wii sales over a similar period. Nintendo later confirmed that the Switch was thus, was thus far its fastest selling console in the Americas without giving in the, any specific numbers. Famitsu reported and estimated that the Nintendo Switch had moved 331,000 systems by the end of its third day at retail, which further checks out with Superdata's research, especially when, when considering the Switch's scarcity post-launch. For context, the Wii sold 600,000 units over a six-day period in the Americas back in November 2006. Superdata's numbers only cover the United States, meaning it's likely that the Switch has at least reached that same number by the end of its first seven days in stores. The Wii went on to be Nintendo's best-selling console of all time, but it's too early to point to the Switch's sales as indicative of similar impending success. The data indicates that the Switch is off to a great start, but leaves unanswered the question whether the new device will be adopted by the mainstream on the long term. Uh, Super Data founder uh, told Polygon, can the Switch grow its install base once the swooning around Zelda dies down? And that's ex that's exactly what what I was going to say uh, after this article. It's, it's all going to come down to uh, the third party support and and even the first party, even what Nintendo's, you know, is going to be making from here on out. It's expected that Nintendo will speak more explicitly about the Switch's sales performance when its financial quarter ends later this month. The company rep reportedly expects the Switch to ship 2 million units by the end of its first month on sale. It's unclear whether it will pass that bar quite yet and whether it will maintain its current momentum, but for an early March console release, it seems as though Nintendo has something to celebrate. Yeah, they definitely do. I mean, I'm not really too surprised that it has outsold uh, the Wii up to this point, uh, especially with The Legend of Zelda being a launch title with it. Uh, I mean, The Legend of Zelda, uh, I also just recently saw that it actually got a 98 on a Metacritic, which is the second best all time, only behind uh, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, which is personally one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, definitely in the top three for sure for me. Um, 
but yeah, like I've always said, I mean, it's no secret, it's in a, a lot of my previous videos that, for me, the Switch comes down to the third-party support. Uh, and speaking of that, because uh, uh, after this we're going to be getting into some Overwatch news, but just to mention uh, Overwatch and Switch kind of together, there was this little article that I saw today, too, recently saying that the director, the Overwatch director, saying that uh, a Nintendo Switch version is not ruled out whatever that means but i just don't know if that's possible because of the you know the overwatch needing to have needing to needing to be online at all times so uh it kind of goes the same thing with destiny you know when i have heard people wanting destiny to be on the nintendo switch you know but uh it's the same thing with that you know with it being such a heavy online game uh, and especially with how uh you know with the switch with the switch's networks and stuff like that going on right now so uh I mean, it would be awesome to see games like Destiny and Overwatch and stuff like that on the Switch, uh, but I'm still just not really quite sure, you know, if they would work out. But, uh, but yeah, like I said, for, you know, for me, it's all going to come down to the third-party support, and it's going to be interesting to see what Nintendo does, you know, from here on out. Like it said in this article, once this, uh, you know, once the hype from Breath of the Wild dies out. Um, so, but yeah, and then like I said, getting into... Uh, some of the Overwatch news. Uh, it's actually uh, the new Overwatch character that has been uh, that has been on the public test realm since March 2nd. Uh, Orisa. Uh, she finally has her uh, public release date. Uh, she should be rolling out on March 21st. Uh, Orisa has been playable on the public test realm since March 2nd. Uh, she, yeah, she is the robotic centaur like creation made by girl genius Ify Oladell to protect Numbani following an attack on by Doomfist. Uh, I haven't I haven't I mean I only play uh Overwatch on PS4 and I haven't played it in a long time so I mean I haven't been I haven't you know tried her out on the PTR or anything like that so um I have watched some gameplay footage of her and uh she actually looks really interesting to play with. I mean, I don't really use tank uh, classes that much. I, I'm normally like an offensive, uh, more attack kind of player. So, uh, but she finally did get her her uh, date when she should be on the public servers. That's March 21st. Moving on to Battlefield, uh, the first Battlefield One expansion uh, actually rolls out today alongside a free update. Uh, and then Battlefield's expansion, it's the uh, They Shall Not Pass expansion. Uh, Battlefield 1's first paid expansion, They Shall Not Pass, arrives today on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC for some. People who own the $50 premium pass get it today, while, while it will be available for everyone else to buy in two weeks, starting on March 28th. Well, there's another thing coming out on the 28th, because that's also when Destiny's Age of Triumph should be going live as well. Uh, the expansion is available on PC through Origin right now, though PS4 and Xbox One players have to wait a little while longer. Uh, as announced previously, Battlefield 1 servers uh, will be or have already been taken offline to apply this update. Uh, they, sh they Shall Not Pass adds the French Army and four new maps set in France. It also includes two new operations, six unlockable weapons, four melee weapons, a new behemoth, uh, the uh, Char 2C tank, and the Trench Raider Elite class. A new mode called Frontlines is also added with the expansion. Uh, even if you're not a Battlefield premium subscriber, your Battlefield experience is changing as a mandatory update arrives today. It adds a spectator mode, adjusts the resupply timers for grenades, and makes a lot of weapon balance changes. The update also fixes a number of bugs, including a problem where it would rain indoors on the Giant's Shadow map. Uh, if you want to, you can see the full patch notes uh, on GameSpot.com, and it there is a ton of weapon changes on there. So uh, I'm definitely not going to run down the whole list and go over all that on this. But um, there, like, like I said, there is a lot of uh, weapon balance changes uh, rolling out with this update today as well. Uh, all right, and moving on, uh, Resident Evil, uh, Capcom, continuing their tradition of bringing all the older Resident Evil titles up to current current gen consoles 
and platforms. Now, uh, Resident Evil Revelation Revelations will be coming to uh, PS4, Xbox One, and PC this fall. Uh, that's all that was really mentioned uh, uh, with the, with this news. Uh, there wasn't like a specific release date, not even really like a specific month or anything. All we know is that it's uh, this fall, uh, which is good. I mean, I, I've played a little bit of Revelations 2, uh, and, it, and I, it's been a long time since I've played it too. And, and it's good. It's not, it's not that it's bad. I've just been playing a lot of other stuff. But uh, I haven't played Revelations 1 at all, so uh, it's... It's actually nice. It's actually dope that this is coming out because now I'll probably actually, once this comes out, go back, play Revelations, and then uh, come back into Revelations 2 and probably start over and play through it again. So, uh, yeah, Capcom keeping up with their traditions, you know, of, uh, y you know, bringing, bringing, upgrading uh, older Resident Evil titles. I mean, they're still supposed to be making uh, Re the Resident Evil 2 remake. I haven't heard anything about it in quite some time, but. Uh, as far as I know, I think it's still uh, actually being uh, actually still in development. I'm pretty sure. Uh, and then in Xbox news today, actually Xbox turns 15 in Europe. Uh, the original Xbox turns 15 in Europe today, following its release in the U.S. and Japan. Microsoft's first games console came out uh, in Europe on the 14th of March 2002, priced at 300 euro. It came with a massive controller and a launch lineup of games that included the groundbreaking first-person shooter Halo Combat Evolved. Uh, Halo, developed by Bungie, was the console's uh, killer app, fueling early adopter sales across the globe. Other launch titles included Amped, Freestyle Snowboarding, Fusion Frenzy, Oddworld, Munch's Odyssey, and Project Gotham Racing. Uh, yeah, so that, that's awesome that the uh, Xbox is 15 now in Europe. Uh, I actually didn't own... Uh, an original Xbox. The first Xbox I got was the Xbox 360. Uh, growing up, uh, you know, I always had had you know the PlayStation One, Two, and Three, and all that. Uh, I mean, obviously, the first console I ever had was a, was a Nintendo. I did play Atari 2600 a little bit, but I never actually owned one. Uh, it was a, but yeah, it was at my like my dad's house and stuff. I used to I used to play it there. So. Um, yeah, that, I mean, that, that's awesome. That, I can't believe it's already been uh, 15 years, you know, since the original Xbox's uh, launch. And then, like, like I said, Halo Halo was a was a launch title for it. So that's even 15 years since Halo's been out. So uh, it's really awesome to see that. Uh, I think, I'm think i trying to remember. I think there was, there was one other just small little thing I wanted to mention, but I can't really remember what it was. So uh, as far as I know, I think that's going to do it uh, for this. Uh, week's episode of Sports Nerd Web Weekly. Uh, thanks for watching. Hit that thumbs up button uh, if you like the video. Sub to the channel for more content. Oh, and on a side note, this is probably actually what I was going to mention. Tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, is going to be Bungie's next reveal stream for uh, Age of Triumph. Uh, it's going to be on at their Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Bungie. Uh, and I, I believe, I believe it's ten ten o'clock. AM Pacific uh, is, I believe, is what the time was last week, and I'm sure it's probably going to be the same time this week. Uh, and last week, when they did the rebuild, they said that this week they're supposed to be talking more about the strikes and like the nightfall, uh, so and stuff like that. So I'm really, really stoked to see uh, what else we're going to learn about Age of Triumph. Uh, as I said earlier, Age of Triumph is supposed to be coming out March 28th, so uh, just a couple more weeks until we should uh, be getting that. So. But yeah, like I said, that's going to do it. Uh, thanks for watching. Sub to the channel for more content, and we will see you in the next one. Cheers.